almost immediately. We, we, we must immediately come together at this point because we don't know if we have any time left in this equation, uh, in this situation that we find ourselves in is 44 plus million so-called American Negroes in this country. And uh, we don't know what the future lies ahead, especially with the fact that we in fact may be facing the brink of extermination because of our condition and which is getting much worse every day in this country for us as a people. And um, as you see, no matter what president we under, we got to take our liberation and along with that meaning our reparations and we're taking control of a state like Mississippi. We will be headed in right into that direction, which could open up even more greater things for us in terms of being a free people finally for once and for all. So uh, <clears throat> I say, I urge us all, let's put our disagreements to the side and get behind this brother. It's important. It, 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 him being in Mississippi is not only a symbol of our passage to freedom, to freedom, but also his purpose and his position right now where he is at, as far as him being in Mississippi, is also a direct intent to lead us to the promised land which is our freedom from under the racist oppression of our oppressors for over 400 years in this country and to deliver us from our slave-like condition where we could once and for all know what it is to truly be a free people. And that's what his position of being in Mississippi right now directly represents. And this is why we need to get behind that brother. And I urge you, those of you that are that is in an organization that he's always claimed, such as the Nation of Islam, I urge you to get behind him. Even if your leadership don't want to approve of that, I urge you to get behind him. Because this is bigger than the nation of Islam. This is bigger than the Black Panther Party, the new Black Panther Party. This is bigger than my old organization, the Nuwabian Nation. This is bigger than the Hebrew Israelites. This is bigger than the Moors. This is bigger than the Christians and the Muslims and so forth and on. This is bigger than the comedic community, the pan-African community, and all this other stuff going on, you know? It's way bigger than that, because we all are still the N-word, or as someone would simply say, we're still niggas in the eyes of our racist oppressors, and we are also still slaves with no land to control with no government to control which would have laws that will fully represent and protect us from what we still find ourselves at as a people in this country which is, again is what represents brother Maurice Muhammad's position of being located in Mississippi so uh, once again and I, and I even say, I urge you brothers who claim that you've always wanted your uh, free constitution, your free nation, the more science temple of America to get behind him if you truly want to be a true independent, free, sovereign nation as you claim to be as Moors. And uh, I also even urge our brothers in the 5% nation to get behind him. I even urge those among the uh, American Negroes who are Orthodox Sunni Muslims, which is a sect I was also once a part of, that put 
put your religion beside and, 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 and build your awareness up on this idea of the Mississippi campaign and get behind that brother and help support him because it's all about us. No matter what religion background we come from, what other ideology we come from, we all need to be a free people. And it's just that simple. Mm -hmm. And then once we get free, then we can get back to debating and arguing our differences over this stuff. But right now, that don't mean nothing. When we are still in the slave-like position that we're in, while we still be done it, be talking about people like Michael Brown and George Floyd and Philando Castile and Austin Sterling and Eric Gardner and Dale Ford and, uh, you know, Sandra Bland and the list goes on. You know what I'm saying? You know, if we could get free by taking control of a state like Mississippi, we won't be having this continuous kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. So, um, I must say that uh, we need to get behind that brother. We need to show him support. Man, he got me almost directly wanting to move to Mississippi. Because, I'm, cause you know, y'all know I've been talking about getting the hell out by the way I'm at right now. Right. But, but uh, yeah, you know, he got me almost ready to move to Mississippi. And I don't give a Darn, if Mississippi is poor, mm -hmm. that'll mean less the less. If it's poor and cheap like that, that means it's less I got to spend beyond my means. You know what I'm saying? Just mm -hmm. to live. <laughs> you know, because, uh, shoot, hey, in these other places, it costs a lot more to live. <laughs> anyway, even if you low income, you know what I'm saying? So, hey, hey, I, I, I would, if it's, if, it's, if it's like that in Mississippi, on that note, I would embrace that. That's no problem with me, you know, as far as that go. But uh, I'll more than likely probably end up in the capital, the big city there, mm -hmm. which, you know, uh, other than that, uh, I mean, you know, hey, and plus Mississippi is the home of one of my uh, late grandparents who I never got a chance to know on my mother's side, you know. He was from some town called Bonesville, Mississippi. Mm. I believe it's right around near cold water where Brother Muhammad at. Because they said that part where my grandfather was from was somewhere actually up there. And I looked at it on a map. It's near uh, Memphis, mm. not too far. So, uh, you know, and it sits right in the uh, Delta area. <laughs> this with all the cotton at and stuff like that, you know. So, uh you know, I, I, it would be like a homecoming for me to return back to the land of my ancestor. So, hey, you know, and plus out of all the states I've been to in the South, Mississippi is one of them states I still have not really explored like that, you know? And so it would be a true homecoming for me to go return home to the land of my ancestor, you know? So, uh, but other than that, uh, you know, far as that go, we need to get behind that brother. We do. We really need to get behind that brother. We truthfully need to get behind him. You know what I'm saying? We need to get behind that brother. We need to push for the fight to get to, to obtain our freedom down there. We can. We can. We can create a new reality down there. You know, and I see people even while I'm at from Mississippi, you know, and some of them, a lot of them are here because of that Katrina situation from the early 2000s, you know, because that part, some parts of Mississippi along the state line, along with Louisiana, where New Orleans is, you know, was affected by that, you know what I'm saying? So um, we need to create a place where they could return to, you see what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, uh, I mean, it's like, uh, it's, it's for us all. It's 40 plus, like you say, millions of us as so-called American Negroes. And uh, I want to see that reality. I mean, you know, like I said, I'm, I don't have much time. I don't know if I have much time left. What I mean by this audience is I don't know if uh, I will be living that much longer. Because they talking about my uh, 
kidneys conditions is not well. I was told by my doctor, uh, you know what I'm saying, a couple of days ago, you know, and, and uh, I, I, I have to wrestle with uh, keeping this, uh, you know, diabetic uh, illness under control more, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you know, plus with the ongoing struggle with high blood pressure and stuff. So, you know, I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm in my early 50s. I don't even know if I can last 10 to 20 some more years, mm -hmm. you know, with y'all, uh, you know. But all I can say is that I'm grateful to be a part of this moment of struggle that, uh, you know, me and brother uh, Angel Snub Snub Seven started on course with three years ago as of this month, yes. in, March of, in March of 2018, you see what I'm saying? So, um, you know, I am grateful to have been a part of the start of that and uh, of this of this struggle, in, which is geared toward us going in the right direction of our complete emancipation from slavery for once and for all which, by the way, did not happen in 1865 and still hasn't happened yet, as many has been led to believe. Uh, <clears throat> but, uh, however, uh, we can, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, get behind this brother and support him, you know? And, and uh, I mean, you know, and, and and I even wanted, and I even tried to reach out to the brother mm -hmm. after, you know, when I asked our brother Talik, and I'm sure you don't mind me saying this, brother uh, Talik, but I asked our brother Talik to reach out to brother Moise Muhammad so I could get his email because I lost contact with the brother. You know what I'm saying? Because I used to stay in contact with him by email, you know, too. So, you know, uh, and, and I never heard back from him. But however, that's okay. We can still get behind our brother. You know what I'm saying? And it's not so much just because he in Mississippi, but because of the truth, you know, sincerity in his heart. Mm -hmm. But why he's there? Because he knows what he's up against. He knows what task he's facing down there. You know what I'm saying? And we know Mississippi and uh, black folks don't roll too well, <laughs> as history accordingly shows. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And especially with, uh, you know, dark skin, uh, soul people like Maurice Muhammad coming from the north, going down there. That definitely don't ride well with them uh, racist pack of woods, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and so, you know, uh, we have to, you know, get behind this brother and support him. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, I, uh, and I also want to say, I want to reach out to our brothers also, even though, you know, we haven't been communicating on social media or on any panels lately, between myself and uh, brother Gary Cool Cool Cutter and brother, uh, you know, Bakari, and even our brother Craig and uh, brother, uh, I would like to say, get behind him. Put your differences aside because it will only make things greater for mm -hmm. us all as individuals and as a group of people all together. You know what I'm saying? And even to uh, Guy Nollywood, I say, brother, you know, put your own differences to the side and, and let's get serious if you truly really want, you know, freedom for us all as a people, even in your uh, the ideology spirit or Pan-Africanism. Put your differences to the side, brother, because we need whatever best you could contribute this well to this cause. So put your differences to the side and let's make this happen. We ain't got time to be playing around. They trying to kill us all. Mm. These, they got us taking these crazy uh, pharmaceutical medications and it could probably be uh, what's, what's killing us health-wise is 
uh, of so-called American Negroes. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, and I mean, you know, I'm not the one to get off into the lane of conspiracy theorism, but some of this stuff that's the so-called conspiracy theories talk about has a possible chance of being true, you know, because of all the stuff that's been done to us throughout hundreds of years as so-called American Negroes in this country. You know what I'm saying? That would, uh, you know, have us assume that anything that's dangerous, especially to our, uh, and that's a detriment to us as a people, may be in fact in store to help further expedite us into extermination. You know, that's what we don't want. So, you know what I'm saying? Uh, let's, uh, you know, let's, let's come together. You know what I'm saying? We have no protection. We have to build and create a safe sanctuary, starting with the uh, control of a state such as Mississippi. We have to. I was just talking to a brother last night after we did a live, you know, and I said, you know, during Jim Crow, it was time when our ancestors, you know, was glad to, uh, you know, finish their nine to five job working for the uh, racist Pecklewood and be able to go back home to what they called the black community mm -hmm. and because they knew it was a safety net, a place they knew it was a, a safety net. You know, even the so-called black Christian church was once a safety net, you know, but we could go for some type of form of sanctuary, even if it meant for us getting away from the races that was trying to hang our ancestors on trees and stuff. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, you know, we, we have to, you know, know and understand the importance, you know what I'm saying, of us, you know, becoming a free people. That means a whole lot because we don't got that. This is why the stuff is happening to us the way it is happening to us in this country as a people. This is why, uh, you know, there are many unjustifiable or uh, police murders of us as so-called American Negroes that's still not resolved to this day. And other uh, racist attacks and murders against us that's still not resolved to this day because we don't have that power of freedom to exercise to protect ourselves against that which will also uh, guarantee us justice against such injustices and by getting out in the street marching and protesting and screaming black lives matter that just ain't gonna cut it they never respect the black lives and they continuously show you they don't respect black lives so we have to show them by respecting ourselves and our own black lives that we got to get behind the cause, such as Operation Exodus Mississippi and the uh, Mississippi Initiative, and to get behind this brother, uh, Moise Muhammad, who is uh, the creator of the Mississippi Initiative, and help support him. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and get with him to make this happen. So that we can one day say the words once again of Martin Luther King Jr. May he rest in peace. Free at last. Free at last. And that's all we looking toward at this point right now. And with that said, before I get tongue tied, I will pass the mic over to our uh, beloved good brother, uh, Dr. Omar Shamsuddin. Uh, thank you uh, very much, my beloved. Uh, I, too, I guess, first of all, I would like to thank Brother Talib uh, for allowing me to join his, uh, his and, uh, broadcast. And I joined with my brothers also in pushing this exodus to Mississippi campaign. It is an idea that I believe is on time and it's in time. 
and I think that um, we should definitely, as a community or as a people, you know, get behind this concept because the reality is, and I'm positively sure that all of our uh, all of our people, I'm talking about indigenous ex slaves, black people here in this country, recognize, especially those of us that are up north and out west, midwest, wherever we might be in this country, are well aware of the fact that through the gentrification process, we are, whether we want to or not, <laughs> having to exodus from er from areas that uh, we have been accustomed to living. And for a lot of us, back from the time in the 60s and 70s and 50s, where we exodus from the South going North in hope of finding uh, better living, work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And even, I guess I can even throw freedom in that, but the, the reality that we all co were confronted with is that we were no more free than we were down south. From the places from which we left, we left our hope for a pipe dream, you know, and that was for, we thought that the, that the racist element of this country was limited <laughs> to down south. When in fact, we really jumped out of the, the, out of the frying pan into the fire because at least the people down south, those, those, uh, Caucasian people down south, they let you know up front how they felt. But the Caucasians up north and out west, they made you think that they was with you, that they was for you. But when in fact, they wasn't. As a matter of fact, I think that... Um, one of the roughest occasions that Dr. King and his movement ran into was in the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they found some vicious blood dripping racists up north, you know? So my suggestion, and, it's, and it is really a strong suggestion that we do need to exodus. And I'm not just talking about exiting from uh, the north to down south, but I'm talking about exiting from the hope that there is salvation for us in integrating into the white society, they really don't want us there. I mean, they tell us that they want us there and say, come on. But through their actions, their actions are saying, leave. And I'm saying to us as a people, when someone tells you and show you how they feel, listen to them. There is greater hope for you in the southern parts of this country because the cost of living, living is better. The jobs may not, may not pay when well, nowadays they just might do pay what they pay up north. But most people, a lot of our people, are entering into working on the internet. 
and you can really work any parts of the country from a, from a computer. And if you make that money, that northern money, and you and you are living in the down south area of the country, you win. That's a win-win. That is a win-win proposition. I'm not mentioning an individual's name so much because I want to sell you on the idea. Because once you are sold on the idea, on the on the concept, you will move south irregardless of the individual. Yes, I agree with, with that brother uh, Maurice Muhammad. He had he has um, touch boot on the ground in Mississippi. Um, I would hope that brother Talib before this book before this air to the public that. Um, uh, being that we are mentioning his name, that you that you uh, maybe get the okay from him. I don't. I, I I I was told that you guys had a meeting last night. I don't know what the what the extent of that meeting were, whether or not it was a discussion. Uh, what's happening in Mississippi or not? But out of respect to him, you know, I would I would suggest that uh, you let him view this before it before it uh before it goes out. Um, and if it and if it already is out, hey, so be it. Still let him view it. You know, because I'm positively sure he has a plan and um, whether that plan is a plan that uh that he want at this particular time out, I don't know. I haven't asked him, haven't talked talked to him about that particular aspect or that particular issue, but I do know that uh, we are, in fact, he is already in Mississippi and um, have put together a game plan in order to make that endeavor a successful one. You know, um, so yes, I agree. I'm a cheerleader. Get behind, get behind the effort. You know, it is an, it, is, it is definitely an effort that started with Brother Talik and um, and those people that was initially involved with him with it, and um, and Brother Maurice, Brother Maurice got 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 ear of it, and hey, hey good idea. You know, did some did some research, found a place where he will be comfortable with him and his wife, and say, "Look, I'm going to go ahead and make that move to give life to the idea of Exodus, Mississippi." I mean, it's, it's it is a perfect perfect marriage, you know. Um, and um, I think that um, it would be who us to take a real close look at this concept and this idea of exodus and moving exodus and, and moving to Mississippi or uh, moving to the southern hemisphere of this country. You know, um, and um, Mississippi is just about as good as place as any to start. You know, there is a um, there is another gentleman, um, I can't even think of his name really, that uh, that has written a book on the importance of and the importance and the opportunity that lays for us, you know, in our moving uh, exodus and coming down to uh, to Mississippi and down to the southern hemisphere of the country. You know, it's kind of it, it is really something else that the land where most of our blood was was shed as slaves has become available to us. <laughs> Isn't that ironic? And it and 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 is an opportunity that we can take advantage of and we have a blood connection to down south. 
through our ancestors. So that's kind of that's kind of unique. Okay, brother Talib, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna ease off on that. We we can go we can go into further discussions, but it, that's just my intro to. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, brother. Uh, I uh, appreciate your uh, additional commentary to this situation, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, uh, I like to just also add that uh, we have to. Uh, look at the seriousness like someone said before we have to investigate and look at the seriousness of this ideal mm -hmm. and what it contains in terms of the, the benefits that could come out of it which will open up bigger doors for us to achieve uh, the fullest extent of what it is to have true freedom, justice, and equality, which we still have not seen as so-called American Negroes in this country who are uh, dogs, descendants of slaves born here in America. And uh, I also must say, too, that uh, we have to, you know, uh, not contribute this either to those other minority groups that are here in this country because they don't directly share our experience. They may be from an oppressed people or other oppressed groups of people, but they don't share our common experience as so-called American Negroes who are descendants of slaves born in this country once again. And uh, hopefully I made myself perfectly clear on that note. And, uh, you know, because uh, it's our time now. Everybody had a chance to fight and gain their liberation in some form or another. Now it's our chance to, in our time to gain our autonomous, uh, you know, liberation for once and for all from an oppressor. You know what I'm saying? It's been our time in the forthcoming and it's in the in, in the long coming it's and we got to take advantage of it, you know, because it might be too late, as someone would say. And like I said, there's so much happening to us already that's pushing us further back, even to the point where gains from our ancestors civil rights struggle of the nineteen sixties is being pushed back. Uh, you know, before our eyes. And this is serious. So this is the reason why we have to, you know, gain our freedom, our true freedom, because it's not going to be given to us. And, and, and uh, you know, we've had even known politicians in Washington who have straight up told us that bars any discussion of reparation is it, definitely not you know up for this discussion it has clearly been told by us it was told by joe biden and even bernie sanders who ran against him for president that reparations is not up for for a discussion you know, he let that group uh, called the Adults Movement know it and other some of the groups like them even know it. That reparations is not up for discussion. So we have to take our reparations and taking control of a state such as Mississippi is the beginning of us taking our reparations because it's not going to be given to us. So the, the crime and the, you know, shouting and pouting over we have still been given our 40 acres in the mule that's dead that's like water under the bridge that's gone we got to take our reparations and it's just that simple i mean you know i don't know how much plain english and understanding you could get from that but <laughs> we got to take our own reparations and, and, and uh 
you know, we have to, uh, we can't, we can't continually be scared because the fear for our, uh, you know, over 400 year slave oppressor is what continues crippling us as a people. Our fear for our open external enemy is continuously crippling our fear, crippling us as people because of our fear for our external enemy. And we cannot keep fearing our external enemy like that. We have to grow, as someone say, we have to grow some balls and we have to boot up and suit up like men and women and take our liberation. And it's just that simple, you know, worrying about what's going to happen as a consequence before it, time out with that. And, 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 and with us trying to an attempt to take control of a state such as Mississippi is the most easiest part about it because it's legal. There's no, it's no indications in any where of that equation that is illegal. It's legal. It's simply legal. So if you, if y'all can't get together, if we can't get together and do that, then yeah, we must be exterminated. It'll be no use for us even existing on this planet. Let less alone as the rest of humanity. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it uh, you know, it'll be no use for us to exist. Because we, we, we serve no purpose being continuously in the condition that we are in as a people. I don't give a damn how many of us from among us is 40 some million that are wealthy, that's famous or whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or, 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 or whatever our uh, so-called more fortunate status than others is. We are still a nigger and the eyes of the racist oppressor that we have been up under for over 400 years in this country. You know, so we have to continuously realize that. If not already, we need to start realizing that, you know, and, uh, you know, let's, let's put our common petty differences to the side and separate it from our common goal to get the freedom and, and, and uh, you know because right now <laughs> all this about I don't like so and so because of this or because of what religion you in or because of what state you from or what city you from or what county you from you know <laughs> ain't gonna get it. ain't gonna get it you know what I'm saying what block what hood you represent ain't gonna get it <laughs> ain't none of that work for us you know what I'm saying? Being a Muslim, a Christian, a Moor, a Hebrew, a Duwabian, you know, or a Buddhist even, you know, and the list could go on with that, you know, ain't, ain't work for us because we still in a slave-like condition, meaning that we are still technically in slavery. Go to the uh, 13th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, you will see Slavery never ended in the United States. And, and and just to be more correct about that, so I won't be wrong, is that correct, Brother Omar, that that's in the 13th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution? Well, they, um, they, 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 they supposedly uh, ended it, but the, uh, the reality is that it, is, it, it was not ended in terms of they gave themselves an out by letting it know that with incarceration, you know, it is still it is still alive and viable. And one of the things that they are doing in this day and time is that they're putting a whole lot of us in slavery, which is which is being is is through incarceration. You know, um yes, sir. and I have I have definitely uh, you know seen been in situations where I've seen it doesn't matter whether you're a doctor or a lawyer. Uh, whatever the case may be, they can grab you off of the road through driving infractions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, everybody don't have to commit a hard crime in order to end up incarcerated. You know? Exactly, exactly, and, and, and exactly. 
And that's something I quickly want to address because uh, as me and his brother Angel Snub Snub M7, who has been incarcerated, uh, you know, uh, know what that's like. And uh, unfortunately, for many of our people, as so-called American Negroes, which is up in the millions now, who find themselves incarcerated in some type of kind of prison or jail or juvenile detention institution across America, can't even attest to that one way or another. And, uh, you know, we, of course, stand as the majority in the entire jail prison population here in America. And uh, that's for a reason. So, yes, that clause in the 13th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, as the brother just basically stated, uh, is correct, which is why so many of us are incarcerated. And, of course, we do not have to even commit a crime to be incarcerated. And it's thousands upon thousands of our uh, fellow indigenous Black American brothers and sisters that are sitting inside America's jails and prisons wrongfully. Some have been, you know, uh, vindicated through DNA and other means, which such as appeals or whatever, but there are still more like them who are still incarcerated for a crime that they did not commit. So yes, it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? If you committed a crime or not, if you're uh, an indigenous black American, you stand a chance of getting incarcerated at any given time. And that's just the simple as that. Just like when they started that, uh, like Sister Michelle Alexander explained in her book called uh, Mass Incarceration, A New Jim Crow, I think. That's the title of her book. But, uh, she basically goes deep into the history of how that started right after so-called slavery was supposed to have ended in the 1860s and where they uh, went randomly and just started picking up black men off the streets and throwing them in them uh, death camps, you know, and which was pretty much from my understanding as I read even in her book, worse than the uh, formal chattel slavery that they had our people in, you know what I'm saying, prior to the Civil War, you know, so, uh, I mean, that's a fact, and that's still going on today. I mean, you know, I had to work on them roads side by side with other brothers when I was uh, being watched under a, a double barrel rifle that a uh, you know, correction officer was holding every day. And we didn't have no choice but to go out there and work. And either we did that or got sent to the hole or even got beat by guards. That would eventually force us to get back out there on the roads and work like they call the chain gang. You see what I'm saying? So, and, and even though in some states they do pay prisoners to work, but it's still a it's still below minimum wage, which is still considered slave labor wages. So, you know, you still a slave incarcerated. You know, it don't it, 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 it's nowhere around it. You are still a slave while you're incarcerated. The thirteenth Amendment has clearly made that known and that was directed at us as a way to further uh, perpetuating so-called keeping the so-called American Negro in our place. <laughs> That's basically all they were saying, okay, we can't outright enslave you, you know what I'm saying? But we can, uh, you know what I'm saying, go through legalities now to keep you in your place as a slave, nigga. <laughs> That's basically all that was as that clause in the 13th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. And you can go research it yourself, <laughs> especially for those of you whose claim you already know or got the research within you. You know what I'm talking about, you know. But uh, 
like I said before, uh, we're still in slavery. Slavery never ended in this country. I'm going to repeat it again. Slavery never ended in this country, especially regarding us as so-called American Negroes. Uh, and, and, and I just want to know, too, that prior to the Civil War, which supposedly, which supposedly ended slavery in this country, there was a couple other occasions where the U.S. government was supposed to have implemented amendments in their constitution that was supposed to free us from slavery prior to even Abraham Lincoln's time in office as president. You know, because under his administration is how we supposedly became uh, free from slavery, okay? But there were times prior to him that they was supposed to be talking about freeing us, but they didn't, okay? So right there, there goes a pattern to prove that they never intended for us to come up out of slavery anyway to this very day. As I just pointed out to you, from the current law and the 13th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, okay, which still deems us slaves, and, and, and through mass incarceration, like the brother just said, you know, that's one way that they're exercising the perpetuality of keeping black people in this country in slavery. You see what I'm saying? And like you say, we don't even need to commit a crime for them to make that happen. So this is why it's important for us to actually get control of a state such as Mississippi so that we could be completely free from this. And when you get tired of, uh, you know, being discriminated against in places like New York, California, uh, Seattle, Portland, Oregon, <laughs> you know, uh, wherever we may be in this country, you can come on to Mississippi. You have a safe sanctuary to come to finally for the so-called American Negro. You know what I'm saying? So uh, <clears throat> I just, uh, you know, and, and then once we can succeed in that quest of taking control effectively of a state such as Mississippi, then we can move on to Alabama and doing the same thing as well in Georgia and South Carolina. In Tennessee, you see what I'm saying? So there you go. You know what I'm saying? We 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 are, we are already on the road. So all we got to do is follow suit, and join, and come behind, and like I said, support our brother Maurice Muhammad in his quest where he's at right now. You know, in Mississippi. Even if we got to some of us, you know what I'm saying? Even if we are willing to get in touch with the brother or somehow or can get in touch with him, let's do whatever we can to get behind this brother. Even at a, even if we got to be done at a distance, we got to get behind this brother, point blank. Say it, you know, we got to get behind that brother. You know, and, 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 and because this, with him being in Mississippi symbolizes a true beginning for us toward true freedom and liberation as an oppressed people as we have been for over 400 years. And not only symbolizes, but marks a beginning, literally, of us once and for all becoming a true free people. So, you know, like I said, we have to get behind this brother. And it's not about just leaning on and supporting him as one man or as a one leader it's all of us together as a team working together it's not about depending on no one individual okay and i'm sure he would agree with that okay so you know we it's all about us being a team and making this work together that's the only way we're gonna get this job done okay and and uh you know, I, I uh, you know, I want, you know, before I close out, I want to uh, pass the mic back to our brother. If, if you have anything else to say, Omar, Jamsadeen, or, uh, or, 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 and if you don't, then uh, I 
I'll leave it up to our brother Angel Snub Snub Seven if he want to comment. And if not, then I could close it out. So I yield my mic for a moment to see what's, what's what. I mean, I would, I would definitely, uh, you know, like to uh, pass on the mic to uh, to uh, to brother uh, Talib because uh, he is one of the orchestrators, so he definitely should be heard from. Yes, sir, Talib, brother Talib. Yes, sir. Well, brother, uh, the invitation door is open. If you want to uh, pick up the mic, or I could close it out. You can close it out. All right. Well. Uh, enough has been said, and uh, I think that uh, at this point, uh, hopefully, this is in, understood clearly of what we're saying tonight to you on this uh, live podcast, and hopefully, uh, this would reach many ears. And uh, let's get on board with the soul train and let's get to our freedom. And with that said, as our brother Don Cornelius would say, love, peace, and soul. We out of here. <laughs>